Good morning to everyone. I'm Elena Sabbioni from Politecnico of Turin and uh, my work of today is about uh, a Bayesian approach for modeling RNA velocity. This is a joint work with uh, Professor Bibbon and Master Antonio from Politecnico of Turin and Professor Sanguinetti from CISOF Trieste. Here we can see a brief overview of my talk today. I'll start giving you a general idea of what RNA velocity is. Then we'll move to the biological framework uh, that is behind this work. I'll, should, I'll show you the uh, data that uh, are available uh, um, for this type uh, of problem. I'll introduce then the mathematical model behind uh, RNA velocity. And then we'll move to the inference part. So I'll present uh, briefly SCVELO, that is uh, uh, one uh, of the most important work in RNA velocity literature. And then I'll show you our Bayesian approach. So um, RNA velocity is a biological quantity that uh, is uh, strongly connected to cellular differentiation and to the evolution of cells. But to understand better what uh, uh, RNA velocity is, we can observe this plot here. Here we have the representation of different uh, cells, uh, of the gene expression of different cells after uh, dimensionality reduction has been taken. We have that the different points here uh, um, are uh, different cells uh, and the colors are connected to the type uh, um, of the different cells. So here, for example, we have ductile, pre-endocrine cells, and so on. The arrow that uh, you see here uh, um, uh, have been drawn uh, using RNA velocity. And so if we observe the arrow here in, in the pre-endocrine cell, we see that uh, they point to epsilon, beta, and alpha cells. And uh, RNA velocity is telling us that uh, uh, pre-endocrine cells are going to differentiate into epsilon, beta, and alpha cell. So uh, we would like to use RNA velocity to understand how the cells are going to differentiate. So the biological framework uh, in which we work uh, is the central dogma of biology, but uh, our attention is uh, on the uh, transcription from DNA to RNA. And uh, specifically, we are interested in the quantity of mRNA molecules in the different cells because um, mRNA is uh, um, involved uh, in uh, uh, cellular differentiation and in gene expression. So the uh, data that uh, uh, are used uh, in uh, RNA velocity framework uh, are generally uh, single cell RNA sequencing data. So um, in this technique uh, gives us for each cell and for each gene the counts of uh, both uh, unspliced and spliced mRNA. So um, in this work, uh, we are going to work with uh, these two matrices with the unspliced count that will be denoted like that and with uh, uh, the spliced counts. Additionally, for each cell, uh, we have uh, um, some labels uh, uh, that tell us uh, uh, the type of each cell. So for example, in the plot I've seen, uh, I've shown you uh, before, we have pre-endocrine, ductal, beta cells, and so on. And uh, we'll use uh, these labels uh, later. OK, uh, one of the uh, most important problem of this uh, technique uh, is that uh, it uh, gives us uh, only um, one, the observation of cells uh, um, in one single snapshot and then all the cells uh, are destroyed. So this is uh, a problem from uh, a statistical point of view because we have only one observation for each cell. Additionally, um, there is another problem connected to this technique because we don't know when uh, uh, the cells, uh, um, at which uh, time of the evolution all the different cells are. We can have cells that are at different time of maturity. 
So uh, the uh, mathematical model that is uh, uh, behind this work uh, uh, is uh, um, a simple chemical reaction network. So for each gene, uh, we have uh, this structure here that uh, has uh, three uh, processes. <coughs> we have uh, uh, the first process from DNA to unspliced mRNA, that is transcription. It took, um, happens at a rate alpha GK, where G denotes the fact that this index is gene-specific, uh, while K is uh, um, an index that can be on or off, and uh, it's related to the phase in which a gene is. A gene uh, um, in this model can be um, active or uh, uh, inactive, so uh, if the gene is active, we have K equal to on, and this means that the gene is a uh, in an inductive phase in which uh, it is transcribed uh, at uh, a high rate. Otherwise, when K is equal to off, the gene uh, is uh, in a repressive phase and uh, uh, we have no transcription or uh, uh, the transcription occurs uh, at a lower rate. Then we have the second process uh, in the model that uh, is the splicing uh, from unspliced mRNA to splice the mRNA. It uh, occurs uh, at rate b beta g. And the last process uh, is the gradation at uh, a rate uh, um, gamma g, in which uh, splice the mRNA is degraded. Um, associated to um, the diagram I've shown you, uh, there is uh, the uh, deterministic system uh, that uh, just uh, uh, describe mathematically um, the, the three processes. And uh, we uh, just uh, start from this model. This is uh, um, the model used in our reference article that is SCVELO that I've mentioned before. So we just fr uh, start from uh, uh, this model, we assume it. So uh, the solution of uh, uh, the system is known. I don't want to go into the detail of this sol solution. Uh, the all important part is that the solution is known in a closed form. And uh, here we can see um, how the solution behave. We'll see this uh, picture uh, in the next slide. Um, but uh, uh, the only thing that I want to point out here is that the time that you see here is not the real time in which the cells uh, um, are, because as I told you before, we don't know um, the maturity uh, of uh, the different cells. So this time is uh, used to uh, connect each cell, uh, each observation to a position in this uh, um, OD dynamic. So uh, here we have uh, uh, the solution uh, um, of the ODE I've just so shown you, and uh, um, is a solution in the S and U um, space. Uh, this is the behavior for one fixed gene, and uh, we can have different behavior. A gene starts with uh, um, the uninductive part, and then we can have two different behaviors. It can reach uh, uh, this upper steady state, and uh, at this point, uh, then uh, uh, the gene is switched and the um, repressive phase starts. Otherwise, uh, um, we can have an uh, early switch that occurs uh, at uh, this time, uh, um, T0G off. And uh, here uh, uh, the switch occurs uh, and then the repressive phase starts from here. So um, with uh, uh, this uh, model in mind, uh, um, we can uh, define from a mathematical point of view what RNA velocity is. Here uh, there is the definition of uh, RNA velocity for one fixed gene, and this is just uh, the second equation of the ODE system I've shown you before. So, um, to obtain this quantity, we need, uh, okay, there was written that uh, we need to estimate the parameter of uh, uh, this, the model. So, our focus uh, now is to estimate uh, these uh, uh, parameters. So, um, SCVELO um, is uh, the most important work in RNA uh, velocity literature and uh, it's based uh, um, on an uh, expectation maximization algorithm. And uh, um, 
Here uh, the authors uh, um, estimate both uh, a time and a um, state for each cell and for each gene. Uh, so they are able to connect each cell to a position in the ODE dynamic using only one observation for each single cell. But uh, in literature, uh, there are uh, several art articles that point out that there are some criticism in SCVELO. Uh, for example, we have uh, a huge preprocessing of the data. We have some other problems like a strong use of dimensionality reduction technique without explaining how uh, they influence uh, uh, the results. Uh, we have a lot of hyperparameters, but the most important uh, point on which we want to focus our attention now is that uh, we have no identifiability of the rates of the model, so the alpha, the beta and the gamma um, that uh, describe the chemical reaction network, and also also um, of the times uh, um, of the, um, that are in the model. So what we propose is a Bayesian approach uh, to estimate uh, uh, the parameters and uh, uh, we would like to try to overcome uh, some of the criticism of uh, SCVELO and trying to understand which parameters can be identified uh, uh, in the model. So uh, now we start uh, um, uh, trying to apply SCVELO uh, to some simulated data, trying to um, see, um, to understand um, why we have uh, some results uh, that uh, I'm going to show you. And then uh, we'll try to, uh, we propose uh, a, a new model that uh, uh, try to, um, to be mathematically better founded and to overcome some of the criticism of uh, SCVELO. So um, here um, we have the results of uh, SCVELO on some simulated data. We have uh, uh, this red curve uh, that is uh, uh, the curve uh, um, plotted uh, using the real parameters I've used to simulate the data while uh, this uh, uh, blue curve here uh, is uh, uh, the curve plotted with uh, the parameters estimated by SCVELO. So we can see that uh, the two curves uh, are pretty far one from the other. And uh, uh, one of the possible explanation uh, um, of these results is because in SCVELO we have only one observation to estimate uh, both uh, uh, the time and the state uh, for each cell. So, um, in our model, uh, um, we um, delete the preprocessing steps that uh, um, we find in SCVELO. So, we um, work with uh, discrete counts uh, and uh, uh, we do not normalize the data as uh, uh, in SCVELO, but we introduce uh, um, a cell specific capture efficiency parameter that uh, um, be, uh, has a similar effect to the normalization, but uh, um, it does not uh, affect uh, uh, the ODE system as the normalization procedure. And additionally, we do not pull or smooth uh, the data uh, uh, as in SCVELO. Then uh, um, to model the data, we exploit some results uh, coming from chemical reaction network theory. Um, we know that uh, the solution of the chemical master equation associated to our network uh, is known. Uh, we have the exact probability distribution both in the uh, steady state and in the transient part. And it's a convolution of multinomial and product of Poisson distribution. And therefore, in order to uh, take into account for additional sources of variability, we use, we use a negative binomial distribution to model both the unspliced and the spliced observation. Uh, the first parameter of the negative binomial is the mean of the distribution and uh, mm, we center the distribution uh, in uh, um, this parameter here that uh, uh, has a first part uh, that is given by the capture efficiency parameter and the second part is the, more import the most important one and uh, is uh, uh, the solution of the ODE system uh, for that specific cell. Okay, uh, I've 
Uh, told you before that one of the problem of SCVLO is that we have only um, we have cell specific times. So uh, we try to overcome this problem, uh, um, not estimating cell specific time, but uh, um, we uh, start observing the uh, real data. We uh, see that uh, when we project them, uh, we have a clear uh, um, separation um, among the uh, cells of different uh, um, types. So here the colors are uh, related to the different types of the cells. So uh, what we do is to uh, consider the cells of one specific time. We uh, cluster them in different subgroups and then we try to estimate one time for each specific uh, uh, subtype. So we move from a cell specific to a subtype specific time. So this is a, a simplification of uh, um, SCVELO, but uh, we introduce also a um, generalization uh, because uh, in SCVELO we have uh, a common switching time for, um, um, for one gene, we have a common switching time for all the cells. What we um, do here is uh, uh, to introduce a switching time that uh, uh, is different for uh, um, each type because uh, from a biological point of view we assume that uh, uh, in in cells of different types uh, can switch uh, uh, in different moments. So for uh, uh, to model uh, the, um, the cell the sub type specific times uh, we use uh, a random effect model and uh, um, we, um, we use a prior for this time that uh, has a, a mean that is type specific. So for each uh, subtype, uh, we connect them with uh, the type, uh, um, the related type. For the other parameters, uh, we have uh, a common prior. Um, for uh, the rates, uh, we have uh, uh, the identifiability problem I've mentioned before, so we have to fix uh, one of the four parameters. And for the other, we use uh, um, truncated normal distributions. For uh, um, the over dispersion is the second parameter of the negative binomial distribution and again we use uh, uh, in truncated normal and uh, um, for the switching time uh, um, we uh, put one mass uh, in, uh, um, in uh, infinite uh, allowing uh, uh, the switching time to reach uh, the uh, steady state and then we use uh, um, again a normal. So here we can see uh, some results. The algorithm that uh, we've used uh, is an uh, um, adaptive uh, MCMC. And uh, um, the points here uh, um, are, um, each point is, uh, uh, rep represents uh, one iteration of the algorithm. And uh, um, the uh, red curve here is uh, again uh, the, um, the curve plotted with the uh, real parameters. The um, green points uh, are uh, uh, the results of the estimation of the uh, lower steady state, that is this point here. The uh, blue one are the um, results uh, of the estimation of this point here, of the upper steady state, mm -hmm. while uh, uh, the orange one are the results of the estimation of the switching point. So these results seem pretty encouraging. The uh, last uh, um, plot uh, is uh, um, the result, uh, show the results of the estimation of uh, uh, the time. So again, the red curve is the real curve. Uh, the uh, red point uh, uh, is the uh, real point uh, um, associated to uh, the cells of that specific time type uh, and uh, uh, the color points that uh, you see here are the uh, estimation uh, related to the um, subtypes uh, associated to this type. So also here the uh, results uh, uh, seems pretty good. 
we know that there is still a uh, uh, lot of work to do. This is uh, ongoing work. We uh, still have to apply these results to real data, so we still have to work, but uh, uh, for now um, it's, the results seem uh, good and we are working to develop more stuff. And these are some references and thank you for the attention. Question or comments? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know very much about this, so it may be naive, but I'm curious if that is related or how that relates to RNA modification. So if you have a modification, does that link with the velocity at all? I don't know, a modification uh, in uh, the RNA, for example, during in the splicing. The in one of the bases, there are these different ways in which the bases can be biochemically deformed. The, mm. This is linked to RNA editing, so these modifications uh, that happen on the bases. So if that mm. would slow down the velocity of that? I don't know, uh, because uh, mm, RNA velocity just uh, mm, tell you how Mm, the cells uh, uh, differentiate, but I, I, I think that the RNA modification can be, uh, can influence uh, this evolution, but uh, I don't know how they are, they can influence the velocity. It, it may be that nobody knows. Yeah, that, so. yeah it <laughs> could be. Any more comments or questions? Um, very nice talk, thank you. Um, I just had just a question on clarification because what you're using is simulated data. Mm -hmm. But with regards to the different um, types, because I'm not too sure about the pancreatic yeah. um, type of data sets, but would it be possible to use this um, when you're looking at the same types of cells but at different points in their evolution cycle? So where the overlay of the colors would be different points in kind of like their life cycle would you still be able to use your method on those? Mm, well, we have only one observ... We don't have different uh, uh, times uh, for different cells, so we have only just one observation, so we don't know in which part of the life cycle a cell is. Uh, by the... Um, what I mean exactly is that you would have one cell, but I mean they're all the same type of cell. Okay. Um, and there are certain markers, from, from my understanding, yep. there are certain markers from the cells that mm -hmm. you can use to define which part they are in their life cycle. So okay. whether, well, I work more with, um, yeah. all the people around me work more with B cells. Mm -hmm. So you would know if it's, for example, a naive, so okay. very early in its life cycle versus a memory B cell, which is yeah. later in its life cycle. Would Again, you're having one observation for each yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. But um, would it be possible to use your method on those as well? Or do they have to have greater differences between the subtypes? No, I think the uh, subtypes are just used uh, um, to uh, estimate better the parameters. So um, you can decide to... Uh, mm, mm, you can use also different vi division of the cells. So for example, if you have some information uh, related to the life cycle, uh, you can add this information and use a different uh, uh, clusterization of the cell and it could help, I think, because the cells, uh, the different groups uh, um, are, you have more groups, uh, you have uh, uh, perhaps more information, so yeah, you could help, I think. And Thank you. Any more comments or questions? Uh, I have a I have a quick one. So the the OD model that you described seems surprisingly simple yeah. somehow. Uh, is it is this the state of art? Did someone else try to? push a little bit further and try to come up with something else? Well, or? is the state of art uh, for RNA velocity. To describe this biological problem, there are more complex models uh, that uh, uh, describe uh, 
more into the de detail uh, all the phenomena that uh, uh, occurs. But for RNA velocity, this is the general model that uh, is used. In some work, uh, uh, they have data also related to the um, to proteins, so uh, they add something, uh, an additional uh, um, an additional uh, process here before degradation that linked uh, splice mRNA to proteins. But uh, uh, yeah, when you have uh, only this type of data, this is the general model that is used. Okay, thank you. Let's thank the speaker again. And, uh,